Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden Wolf, and today we're going to answer the question, is this worth it? It seems to be a very hot subject on uh, YouTube right now. Is the SM7B worthwhile? This is Aiden Wolf. So I got into tech on YouTube a few years back, and I got to say, the first guy I started with was Jay's Two Cents. Um, and then, you know, I moved over, I started watching Bitwit, I started watching Paul's Hardware, Love Linus Tech Tips, and the 25 or so channels that he has. But who really got me in was Jay's Two Cents, and I loved watching his builds. Uh, he's different from everyone else in his own unique way, as a good YouTuber should be. But then I watched a video uh, earlier this week where he's setting up his home streaming studio, and he went out and he bought himself an SM7B, the Sure, And he claimed that it was just not worth buying. Just wasn't worth the purchase. It wasn't worth going out to get. It wasn't worth the money. And I have some thoughts. Now, the SM7B, it's just clear the air right now. It's a great purchase. It is a great microphone. It is exactly what you might want if you're doing anything that's broadcasty, even if you're a streamer, if you're a podcaster, basically anything of spoken word or even music. This is a great little microphone to have. It does have some drawbacks. It also has a lot of positives. So let's talk about why Jay doesn't like the SM7B. But first, Let's actually get the SM7B working on here, and I'll show you what I mean. Now we got the SM7B hooked up. Um, for one, this is a dynamic microphone, if you didn't know. My Rode, the NT2A, is a condenser microphone, so it's going to have uh, phantom power on it, which will give it better pickup than this. This actually has very low input, meaning if you don't have enough gain, you're going to hardly hear yourself. Most dynamic microphones are kind of like that. This one specifically is probably the worst offender. Because of that, you do require sometimes uh, a little bit of a boost, which is why the cloud lifter and fat head exist. So you can get decent gain without all the noise, especially if you have an interface that's a little noisy on the preamps. You definitely want to get a cloud lifter or something like that. Other than that though, it's basically world renowned for its tone. This thing has been used for albums, it's been used for broadcast, it's been used for podcasts, it's basically been used for everything because it's that good of a microphone. Now, of course, you saw in my video earlier where I was comparing the SM7B to the SM58 and how they don't sound that different when you put a different profile on the 58. It's true. Um, you can actually come relatively close to the sm 7B with the SM58. It's basically the same cartridge. It has a few differences to it, which you can see in the video if you want to check it out. Now, let's get to what Jay was actually saying about this microphone. Now, Jay was hoping to have a streaming mic that actually this is probably a better representation of what Jay wanted. He wanted a streaming mic that was going to be off camera or at least out of his frame, away from his face. He didn't want something stuck up here. Now, like I said before, with the low pickup on this microphone, you can't do this with this microphone. It doesn't matter how much gain you put to it. All the gain you put to this is just gonna give you room noise. It's not gonna give you anything else. It's not gonna bring any of your voice out. Now, when you bring this up to your face, one of the things you're going to notice is your voice sounds fuller. It sounds just a little butterier. It just sounds really nice. And the reason for that is called the proximity effect. Now, a lot of guys with voices like mine love this mic for that very reason. The proximity effect, getting up nice and close, can give you a nice, gorgeous sound to your lower end. And that's your first folly with this microphone. If you're getting this to be on video or anything like that, you're going to have to live with the mic in front of your mouth. It's just the kind of microphone it is. Now, Jay bought this microphone. When he realized that this wasn't working over here, he decided to go and purchase some things to try to make it work. He got himself a cloud lifter. He got himself a preamp. He, he basically started dropping money 
onto the microphone to try to make it the sound the way he wanted to make it sound. He ended up spending so much money that he got frustrated and he turned around and said, you know what? This microphone is no good and not worth buying. And he went back to a Blue Yeti, which don't laugh, Blue Yeti is still an okay microphone. It's great starter mic. And a lot of people have launched some pretty successful projects with the Blue Yeti. But is this mic suck that bad? Well, no. It all comes back to use case, especially with microphones. Microphones fit different needs. This one, kind of a close talker. You need to get up on it. It's meant to take in the proximity effect. It's meant to be used as a broadcast microphone. It's not meant to be this microphone. <laughs> Otherwise, you if you really wanted to have a microphone that actually shot from far away, you could go get yourself a shotgun microphone. They're great for that. And they actually pick up some great tone in your voice as well. Or you can get a lavalier mic. Nobody will see it, or at least not much of it. But if you don't want a microphone in your face, your options are relatively limited. Now, that being said, with a little bit of research and a little bit of kind of figuring out exactly what your needs are and then buying the right microphone for those needs, you're probably going to be better off in the end. And one of the things that Jay did mention in this video is he always saw people using this microphone. And this was one of those microphones that he always wanted to shoot for because this microphone meant you made it. And while that might be true for a lot of people, microphone isn't a status symbol. Microphone just is a tool. It's something meant to deliver your voice in the best way possible. But that might mean that getting a microphone outside of the one you want. I didn't get the U87. I got the NT2A. One, budget. Two, mic sounds great on my voice. So, when you're buying a microphone, make sure you do a little bit of pre-planning. Decide what your best scenario is, what your best setup is, and aim for it. And if your setup requires a microphone that's not in the shot, maybe just keep shopping. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you really like it, get subscribed, stick around for a little while, have a little bit of fun with me. If not, I... Guess I'll see you the next time you randomly stumble across one of my videos. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.